What's up everybody? So I'm out trying to get some exercise and trying to enjoy the fresh air. And I'm on the south side of Chicago right now. You know, and this is actually what's called uh Black Beach. That's what I call it anyway. Uh I think the official name or the official non-official name or the name that everybody calls it is uh Rainbow Beach, right? You know, so it's uh one of the many beaches in Chicago. And because it's on the south side of Chicago where most black people uh live, I shouldn't say most, but I'll say a lot of black people live. It's called Black Beach or Rainbow Beach. And uh, that's that's what, you know, people call it. I think actually it could actually be the official title of this particular beach, right? So, and it's kind of funny because I've never actually come to this beach before. I've always heard a lot about it. I've always heard that it was super ghetto, so on and so forth. And I, you know, so this summer, I think I'm going to make it a habit you know, just to come out here and chill and to, you know, come out here and hang with black people and just enjoy the barbecues, so on and so forth. But for the most part, you know, since I'm out getting exercise, I thought I would, you know, take the time out to talk about how I think we live in a rip-off society. We live in a rip-off society. Everybody's looking to get over on you. Everybody's looking to take advantage of you. And I think things have pretty much gotten so bad that it's kind of seeped in to our everyday lives. How we do business, uh, how we treat one another. And I, you know, I guess I've always been kind of like a pushover or the type of guy that just kind of accepts whatever's given to him. You know, I guess, I guess they call it uh, a beta male. You know, so maybe I've always been a beta male and I've never really noticed. And I'm the type of person, I believe that uh, if you work hard, you treat everybody honest, honestly, then I think, you know, you should have a good life. And for the most part, I still believe that. But I think now you just have to have an extra layer on top of that, right? You can't be too nice. So you know what, actually it is called Rainbow Beach, you know, so I'm actually looking at the sign here and the sign is actually Rainbow Beach. So this is officially Rainbow Beach on the south side of Chicago. Enjoying the weather, getting some fresh air, getting some exercise and just trying to live life to the fullest. But, you know, back to, uh oh, here come the police. Here come the man. I hope they don't arrest me. I hope I don't have a mask on, so. I hope I don't get, uh, I hope I don't get, you know, a ticket or something crazy like that. But yeah, so we, we live in a ripoff society and, you know, you just can't be a nice guy anymore. I think that you can't be a nice guy. There's a penalty. There's an actual penalty to being nice, to being respectful, and you're punished for not being conniving. Hold on a second. Let this police pass. Hey, how's it going? You enjoying the weather? I'm trying to. Has the mayor might be coming down and visit the beaches. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and, and she's not a fan of people being out. Oh, wow. So, I was going to give you a heads up, because I don't, you know, I don't got a problem with you enjoying yourself, you know. Right, you right. Yourself, you know, heads up, she might tell us to give you a ticket, okay? So okay, so I'm, I'm going to cut out of here soon. I'm just trying to get a little exercise. So, I, you know, I guess Lori Lightfoot don't want us getting any exercise. She don't want us to enjoy the weather. You know, we got this coronavirus and uh, they're trying to, you know, keep everybody indoors. And, you know, and, and, and the coronavirus is, is a topic that I haven't really covered and I should have covered it. I was so busy trying to cover the R. Kelly stuff. But to be honest with you, I really need to leave R. Kelly stuff alone because it's it's kind of run its course from now. For now, right? You know, so he's been de denied bail and... There's not that much going on right now in the case, or at least there's not much more going on that I want to talk about. You know, there's probably a lot of stuff going on, but not not that much that I want to talk about. But the coronavirus, you know, so this stuff is just getting absolutely crazy. You know, when 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 there was an initial outbreak, 
I, I, I thought it was a good idea to kind of quarantine everybody and to have everybody stay in their homes and, you know, try to be safe and not infect other people if you're infected, you know, so on and so forth. But now this thing is, is kind of gotten out of hand. And, and to be honest with you, I was upset with a lot of people who were coming outside. They were partying, hanging out, kicking it. I'm like, dude, you, you're spreading the virus. You're spreading the, mother, you're spreading the motherfucking virus. And you think that's okay for you to do just whatever you want to do and basically endanger the lives of other people. But shit, you know, now that I've been locked up in the house and I'm a single guy, I'm, I'm single. I don't have a wife. I don't have any kids. So I'm lonely than the motherfucker, you know? So it's like, it's, it's, it's time for this, uh, this Corona stuff to end. I'm either going to go crazy and end up you know, doing some, you know, some crazy stuff and end up locked up or in jail, or I'm just going to die of boredom. So, I mean, those are my three options. Die of coronavirus, die of boredom, or go crazy and go out in the street and do some something crazy and end up getting locked up. You know, so I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Is it time for the corona lockdown to end? Is it time to just take a chance and let whatever happen happen, you know. But anyway, that's not even the t that's not even what I wanted to talk about. The police got me on a on a different wavelength. He threw me off on my uh, he put me on a different frequency. Basically, I wanted to talk about the rip off society. You can't be nice. Everybody is looking to get over on you. Everybody is looking to run an angle, even if they just seem nice. And sincere deep down the side people are looking to take advantage of you they're looking to take what you have they're looking to take what you work for and I, I guess I've just been naive all this time and I just never understood that's how the world works and it's probably always worked that way so it's 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 kill to be killed eat or be eaten and you know man you know it's a dog eat dog world and i was never raised to view life like that but i think my parents made a mistake i think i think my parents made a mistake if i have children i'm going to teach them to always to never trust anybody you know you can never trust anybody, even if it's something as simple as buying food. And this is really what kind of got this topic started. I went out. No, I was at home. Actually, I was at home and I was working and I didn't want to really break the flow of my work. So to go and get lunch. So I was like, well, you know, what? let me just go ahead and order some some something to eat from uh, Postmates. So I ordered Postmates and um I order Postmates and I'm I'm monitoring the driver go and pick the order up. I'm monitoring her, right? You know, because if you've ever used Postmates before, you know that you can watch when people go uh, pick up your food. You can get a, like an instant status. You know if they've, if they've gotten to the restaurant or not. You know if they pick the food up. You know, so you can get like a instant you can get a instant update on where your food is, right? So I'm watching her and I see that she's picked the food up. So I'm like, okay, cool. I said, let me just go ahead and call her and uh, tell her that I live in a third floor apartment building and tell her that she has to ring the third floor bell so she can bring the food up. So I call her, I give her a call, she picks up the phone and I said, well, hey, listen, you know, I live on the third floor and uh, buzz the bell when you get here and then I'll buzz you up so you can drop the food off. And she's like, no, that's not that's not what we do. I'm like, excuse me. And she's like, well, we leave the food at the door. I'm like, well, yeah, my food is on the third. I mean, I'm, my door is on the third floor. And she's like, no, I'm just going to leave it downstairs. And and at this point, I'm like, I'm almost like, I always want, almost want to say, bitch, are you out your motherfucking mind? I wanted to say that, 
But I said, you know what? Let me control myself because a lot of times things get out of hand when you lose control. So I said, okay. I said, well, listen, I live on the third floor. And I said, if you leave the food downstairs, anything can happen uh, before I pick the food up. And I said, I just don't feel comfortable with you just sitting some food out uh, downstairs outside of the building. I'm paying because I'm paying for a service. And with that service, I expect for the food to be delivered uh, at my door or put in my hand. Really, I, I really expect it to just be put in my hand. That's really what I expect. So she goes, well, if you want, you can cancel the order. I said, all right, you know what? I said, you know what, if, if, if you really don't want to deliver my food, uh, I guess there's nothing that I can do. But in all honesty, I think she was basically trying to bluff, basically saying, this is what you're going to get. And if you don't like it, then you can just, you know, go somewhere else or order somewhere else. Right. And, uh, you know, so, so yeah, I, I think that that was her, uh, a bluff move. So I said, fine. I said, I guess I'll, I'll just go ahead and cancel the order. So I canceled the order and then I put in the reason why I canceled the order. I put in there that I'm canceling the order because she told me to cancel that shit. Right? So then I'm looking at the app and there's no way in the app where I can get a refund. There's no way in the app where I can basically uh, tell them that this thing, I, well, actually there's a, a place where you can put a description of why you're canceling the order, but there's no way to back out of the actual order to say, hey, you know, this service is unsatisfactory. That's what I'm trying to say. There's no way in the Postmates app when you're in a situation like this where you can indicate that the service is unsatisfactory. You just simply want your money back, right? So I cancel it. I, you know, I cancel it thinking that, you know, maybe somehow they were going to do the right thing. And in that, in that situation, I really didn't have a choice because, like I said, she decided already that she wasn't going to deliver the food uh, to me personally. She was going to leave it outside, outside of my building. And, you know, so I have no choice at this point but to cancel anyway. But there's no way in the app that allows you to say, hey, we have a serious problem here. So I, I expected that when I put the cancel order in that I would receive some type of call or some type of feedback. Nah, I didn't receive none of that. The only thing I got was an email saying, you've canceled your order, here's your bill. And I think the, the actual cost of the wings was, was only like 12 bucks. But the order ended up being like 22 bucks. You know, that, you know that's just, you know, the cost of doing business. Uh, you want to be lazy. You want to have people deliver food. That's what they charge, you know. And, and, you know, don't even get me started on that because I think uh, before all this Postmates Grubhub and all that stuff, you know, at the most, you're looking at like maybe a $4 delivery charge on food and then you decide whether or not you want to tip. Uh, you know, these people have just gotten over. You know, the world, and this is just another example of what I'm saying. I think Grubhub, Postmates, food delivery in general is just a ripoff. You see what I'm saying? It's just a huge ripoff. The people, the money is going, the majority of the money is going to the corporation. The people who deliver the food are getting next to nothing. And because they're getting next to nothing, you get silly people like this that decides that they want to somehow give you a unsatisfactory service because they're not making any money, right? So I get an email. An email basically says that your order is canceled. Your bill is $22. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, are you out your motherfucking mind? You know, so I'm, I, I go back in the app and I'm frantic and I'm trying to figure out a way to make a complaint or to, you know, hit some type of button where I can uh, put put a grievance in to say, well, hey, look, you're billing me uh, for something I didn't receive. You're billing me for service I didn't receive and for food that I didn't receive. And there's nothing on the app that basically allows you to do that. And actually, I think that's a case for a lawsuit because what they're doing is that if, if they're putting you in a situation is whereas if something goes wrong, there's no way you can get your money back, right? So 
I'm frantic about this shit. I'm trying, I'm like, what the hell, what can I do to get my money back? What can I do to stop all this bullshit? So eventually I find like a complaint form or something like that. But the complaint form is really not a mechanism to get your money back. It's just you putting in a random complaint and it has nothing. It doesn't tie in to your particular order. You know, so I said, okay, well, I just put all the information in the complaint about the particular order. And, you know, I submit that and then nothing, nothing. And, you know, I'm sitting there and waiting and waiting. I'm like, shit, what can I do? What can I do to keep these motherfuckers from ripping me off? You know, because we live in a rip off society and people are looking to take everything you got. They looking to take everything you got because they feel that they have a right to take it. So finally, I started thinking and I remember a video that I did a while back. And, you know, I really didn't do a good job at it. And, uh, you know, with these videos, these are just like, you know, random talks. I need to, you know, find a way to do better videos. But anyway, in that video, I talked about what to do when you receive unsatisfactory service. Right. What to do when people are basically trying to rip you off. So what the one thing I remember is that anytime you use a credit card, anytime you use a bank card, anytime you do any type of electronic transaction, there is always a built in mechanism from the car companies themselves to allow you to stop fraud. It allows you to uh, stop unsatisfactory service. And it allows you to stop, uh, you know, basically from being ripped off, right? You know, so there, there's a built-in feature in every bank card, every credit card that basically uh, allows you to use it as a tool to, to protect yourself, right? And to be honest with you, I was at the point where I was ready to basically just give up because I, I felt as though they just got my money. And I put the complaint in and there's nothing I can do beyond just putting the complaint in because there's no local Postmates office where I can just, you know, walk in and, and just go and ask to speak to a manager. There's not even a, a freaking phone number that you can call. Right. You know, so for the most part, I gave up. I was ready to give up. And then I, you know, then I remembered that one video. And um, so the, every credit card, every bank card any type of electronic media not media but any any type of um electronic or card based um financial services has a feature built into it these police are still trying to get motherfuckers off the beach damn i may as well so i'm, I'm gonna get off this beach real soon um you know, I don't want to get a ticket. And plus it's starting to cool off. It feels like it's going to rain. Uh, one second. What's going on? Yeah, I guess they, they didn't talk to me because they see that I'm recording. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I feel bad for, I mean, see, they, see they're telling them to get off the beach because uh, <laughs> they tell them motherfuckers to get off the beach. Did they tell y'all to get off the beach? No, he said always listen to the women. He said what? Always listen to the women. To the, to the women? Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so there's a built-in feature in every card that you use for financial transactions that <laughs> has a grievance process in it or it has a process in it to keep you from getting ripped off. And... Um, there's actually something in the uh, Fair Credit uh, Act or something like that. You know, actually, don't quote me on that. It's probably not the Fair Credit Act, but there's actually a law that is built around uh, disputing bad service. There's a law for it, right? And because of this law, credit cards have features. And you know, when, I, when I get back home and I get in front of my computer, maybe I can uh, go in detail about this. But... Um, you know, essentially, the way it works is that you call your company and you base your credit card company 
and you basically tell them what the situation is, right? You tell them what the situation is. And um, what I decided to do though, after having a conversation, and you, and you know what? It may take some engineering, it may take a little social engineering, but basically what I decided to do, we actually couldn't find the charge on the credit card because Postmates hadn't posted the charge yet. And because Postmates hadn't posted the charge, they were unable to basically dispute it, right? They were unable to dispute the charge because it hasn't posted. But luckily enough, I had ordered post through Postmates before and the company's name, right? Because the company name and as it shows up on your credit card is typically different, right? It can be different because a lot of times they try to abbreviate the name, uh, you know, so that it fits on the... Uh, on the statement, right? So fortunate for me, the charge, I had been charged by Postmate before, and I said, hey, look, just block everything by, by this vendor right here, right? And it's no soon as I did that, no soon as the credit card company, I think it was basically Chase, no soon as they, as soon as they blocked the vendor, Postmate must have tried to post the charge and it got denied and then they reached out to me they emailed me and they said hey we're canceling your order and we're refunding your money right they said we're refunding your money and we're going to give you a free delivery but in all honesty i don't think they would have ever done that hadn't i didn't if i didn't block them right if i didn't block them they would have taken the money and they would have basically, uh, you know, gotten away with essentially murder, you know, ripping the motherfucker off. Right. You know, so, yeah. So that's it for this video. Let me know what you think. Do you think we live in a rip off society? Uh, do you think people are always looking to get over on you? It doesn't matter if it's a restaurant vendor. It doesn't matter if it's a uh, person to person. It doesn't matter if it's a friend, a family member. You know, in general, I just find that, uh, you know, people are just looking to screw you over and take what you have, right? Let me know what you think. Leave your questions, comments below, and like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.